it is true that Mr. Dorfman's cleaning establishment did shrink Mrs. Ferguson's drapes? Ah, uh, it was your responsibility to inform him of the special handling required for this material. So? So I find that your claim is not valid. Case dismissed. Thank you, Ron. Rotten cleaner. Shall we recess for lunch, Your Honor? Oh, I think we have time for one more. Case 179348. Will the parties please step forward? Pardon me, madam. I'm here. Will the other party please step forward? Who is the other party? That girl! I'm sorry I didn't respond before, Your Honor. I was consulting my evidence. Would you please state your name? Anne Marie. Thank you. Your Honor, I intend to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that... Miss Marie, it is customary to introduce both parties before any proving begins. Oh, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. Would you please state your name? Arnold Lemming. Uh, Your Honor, she has no right to sue me. I'm suing her. I'm aware that there are countersuits, Mr. Lemming, but I feel that it would be proper to hear from the lady first. I see that this case involves an automobile accident. Wasn't the car insured? Well, yes, it was, Your Honor. Uh, but this particular case involves less than the $50 deductible covered by the policy. It's forty-six fifty-three to be exact. All right. Now, could you tell me exactly where you and Mr. Lemming were situated just prior to the accident? Yes, Your Honor. The vehicle which I was operating at the exact time of the aforementioned accident was, at the exact time of the accident, temporarily stationary. Miss Marie, we have a long calendar. Please get on with it. Oh, yes. Well, uh, my car was stopped at an intersection. And, uh, Mr. Lemming? He was on the sidewalk. On the sidewalk? What sort of a vehicle was he in? Uh, well, I guess you could say he was in his shoes. He was a pedestrian. You ran into a pedestrian? Oh, no, Your Honor. The pedestrian ran into me. A pedestrian ran into your car and caused $50 worth of damage? Forty-six fifty-three. I wish at all times to keep the record straight, Your Honor. Now, uh, maybe uh, you'd better tell us exactly what happened from the beginning. Well... It all started when my mother gave me this lovely rubber tree plant for my apartment. You see, she lives out in Brewster, New York, which is about 30 miles out of town. But since I don't have a car, I had to borrow my boyfriend, Don's. And he'd come over to my apartment to pick me up to take me to an audition for a part. And, and, are you out of your mind? You want to put a tree in my brand new car? Oh, Donald, it's just a rubber tree plant and it's about this high. Yeah. And about this wide. Oh, it is not. It's a very skinny plan. Yeah, with big fat leaves that'll fall all over my back seat. Donald, it only has about six or seven leaves. Well, Aunt, listen, if it's so short and skinny and puny, why do you want it in the first place? I'm gonna nurse it back to health. Look, my car is not an ambulance for diseased trees. You make it sound like it's gonna bleed all over the upholstery. Oh, look, and I hardly had a chance to drive the car myself. Oh, I'll put newspapers all over the floor. It isn't even housebroken. Oh, Donald, please. Will you? It's a present from my mother. I don't see why you're trying to upset me. I'm nervous enough as it is about this audition. And I'm sorry. The part I hope you get, the plants you don't need. Oh, Donald. Please. Are you sure there's no other way? Then you let me have it? No, I didn't say that. I just asked if there wasn't another way. Yeah, but you wouldn't have asked that unless you knew there was no other way. And, and, look, will you be careful? There won't be a single leaf in your car. Now, I'm not as worried about leaves in the car as I am about dents in the fender. You know how careful I am. And I don't want anything to happen to my brand new car.
Oh, Donna, will you stop worrying? I'm an excellent driver. I've got 20-20 vision, great reflexes, and perfect coordination. How you got the car has little bearing on this case. Oh, I object. You can't. Oh. Well, what can I do to indicate that what you've said is not entirely correct? Or accurate? Sir. You may object. Thank you, Your Honor. Proceed. With my story or with my objection? With your objection. I have outlined this conversation in such detail so that Your Honor might realize the high degree of responsibility with which I was charged. Your Honor. Oh. Oh. Please proceed. I was proceeding in a northerly direction, maintaining a speed well within the limits set forth and prescribed by the judiciary of the city of New York. Do you usually talk like that? No, Your Honor, just when I'm in court. Well, I, I think it would be a little easier for all of us if you just talked like you do uh, every place else. I was driving this way, and very slowly, because, you see, I had the rubber tree plant in the back of the car. And, you know, it wasn't as small as I thought it was. In fact, it's about five feet tall, and it has these beautiful green leaves, and it's a really very attractive pot. Sounds lovely. Oh, it really is. May I object, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Now, listen, we're wasting an awful lot of time with this jazz about the rubber tree. I've got a business to conduct, and I'd like to get out of here. Objection sustained. What did you just do? Well, Your Honor, right is right. I mean, the plant, though relevant, is really not important here. What do you think we should do now? Proceed. By all means. Anyway, I was driving back home and being extremely careful because of what I said before. Uh, not about my boyfriend, but about the plant. Watch where you're going, lady. I wasn't going. You were going. Listen, can I do anything? Yeah. Stay off the streets for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, just look at my sewing machine. Oh, is that what it is? Was. Was the brand new deluxe super flyer. Chain stitches, embroiders, buttonholes, everything. And now it's garbage. I'm really sorry, but... Oh, no! Look what your sewing machine did to Don's car! Don's car deserves whatever it got. Oh, officer, I'm so glad you're here. What seems to be the trouble? We, see, we had this collision. Well, who's driving this car? I was, I was. Well, where's the other vehicle? Well, it wasn't a vehicle. It was a sewing machine. You were driving a sewing machine? No, 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 I wasn't driving it. I'm a salesman. I was carrying it. And you collided. That's right, that's right. I better have your license number. Oh, yes, officer. It's uh, 4G82H9. G H nine, and what's your license number? The sewing machine doesn't have a license number. Oh, uh, why don't you give him the serial number off the sewing machine? <laughs> All right. Three two six nine seven four three eight D eleven. Three, two. Yeah, copy it. <laughs> Keep it. Now, exactly what happened? I was stopped at the intersection, and he ran into me. <laughs> I was crossing the intersection, and you ran into me. You hit my car broadside with your sewing machine. I did not. You did, too. 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 Please, may we have a little order? I'm sorry, Your Honor, but he did. I did not. <laughs> Didn't, 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 didn't. Miss Marine, you claim that Mr. Lemming's sewing machine dented your fender. It most emphatically did. And is it true, as Mr. Lemming claims, that his sewing machine was also damaged? Well, I have to admit it was kind of sproined. Sproined? Well, you know, sproined. <laughs> 
I find it very difficult to believe that a pedestrian could run into your car. Your Honor, I realize that this circumstance is somewhat extraordinary, so I would like to, with the court's permission, introduce a witness. With the court's blessing, introduce him. He's not here, Your Honor. <laughs> She's crazy. You stay out of this. Well, he'll be here. He'll just be a little late. Uh, but that doesn't matter because I've got another witness I'd like to call. All right, Miss Marie. Uh, introduce your witness, but please be brief. We still have to hear from Mr. Lemming. And boy, will you ever hear from me. Would you please call Mr. Don Hollinger? Mr. Don Hollinger. <laughs> Your Honor, this is Don Hollinger, my boyfriend. Uh, just for the record. Congratulations, for the record. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> Mr. Hollinger, do you own a car? What are you talking about? I'm questioning you. Do you own a car? Oh, Anne, if I didn't own a car, we wouldn't be here in the first place. Just a simple yes or no, please. <clears throat> All right, uh, yes, Mr. Mason. Donald, that isn't necessary. You hear those crazy questions. Well, My dear about? children, I will decide what is necessary. Haste is necessary. Hey, hey! <laughs> Miss Marie, you don't have to prove that Mr. Hollinger owns the accident vehicle. We took your word for it. Oh, well, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Hollinger, what was your reaction when I told you that a pedestrian ran into your car? You want me to tell the truth? Please do. <clears throat> All right. Um, I didn't believe you. See? He's on my side. No, I'm not on your side. I am on her side. How can you be on her side when you don't believe her crazy story either? <coughs> Missed me that time, Judge. Just what is the purpose of this line of questioning? Her purpose is to waste time. She's just stalling, Your Honor. Oh, no, Your Honor. My purpose is to prove that he didn't believe me, because if he did believe me, we wouldn't be here. Oh, you should have believed her. <laughs> is there any other reason why this witness was called? Yes, there is, Your Honor. I am so glad. <laughs> All right, then. Mr. Hollinger? Let's just tell the court how upset you were when I told you that a pedestrian ran into your car. Oh, oh. well, I, I wasn't that upset, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, you remember that I came back to your apartment right after I saw my insurance man. But, uh... <laughs> oh, golly, I wasn't that upset, Your Honor. <laughs> A pedestrian could not have made that dent in the fender unless he was a pedestrian elephant. I told you, he made the dent with his sewing machine. Well, why not a washing machine? It would have made a bigger dent. Because he's a sewing machine salesman. Hey, didn't you tell the insurance man about the needles in your engine? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And he looked at me like they would cancel the policy. You really don't believe me, do you? You're very perceptive. Give me a hand with this thing. I'll bet you'd believe me if I told you I ran your car into a truck. Yeah, yeah that I would believe. You really don't have any faith in me, do you, Donald? Man, I had enough faith in you to loan you my car and let you run it into a truck. I can see I'm never going to be able to convince you. I'm always open to the truth. Here, push this. I just want to forget about the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you can forget about it. But I have to live with a dented car. I'm going to pay for it, even though it wasn't my fault, because I did tell you I'd be careful and I feel responsible. And look, you don't have to pay for it. I insist. Well, you can't insist. <laughs> You're really very nice. You know, <laughs> my car was demolished, and this dumb tree came through without a scratch. Well, it's a good thing, too. Your car can always be repaired, but just think of what the trauma could have done to this plant. A trauma? How can a plant have a trauma? It's a living thing. It's probably very sensitive. <laughs> oh, what? Maybe we better go in the next room and talk so it won't hear us. Donald, anything you have to say to me, you can say in front of my plan. <laughs> you know, look, now I know how you had the accident. Well, this thing was obscuring your vision, right? I mean, with all these big leaves and all those branches and how wide it is where well, you couldn't see, right? No. It was the man with the sewing machine who couldn't see. And are you going to start that ridiculous story it's again? It's not a ridiculous story. Why don't you just believe me? Do I have to believe you? I'm willing to forgive you. I don't want you to forgive me. You just don't know how frustrating it is for somebody to forgive you when you're telling the truth. All right, then. All right, then. 
Have it your way. I don't forgive you. The way I want it is that you believe me. All right, then. I do believe you. No, you don't. There's no way to please you. I don't want to be pleased, Arnold. I want to be believed. Yes? Miss Anne Marie? Yes. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What was that all about? I don't know. I think I won something. Well, of all the nerve. It's a subpoena from Lemming. Yeah. He's suing me for breaking his sewing machine. We all know that he's suing you for breaking his sewing machine. <laughs> What did I just say? You said we all know that he's sewing you for... Pork will recess for lunch. <laughs> Do you think I'm winning? Oh, I don't know, Ann, but you got him so confused you couldn't be losing. John, are you starting to believe me? <clears throat> oh, well, I'm sorry, but uh, witnesses are not allowed to discuss the case during the recess. <laughs> a good lunch. Shall we take another crack at it? Unless, of course, during recess, it was settled out of court. No, Your Honor. I was afraid of that. Yeah. <laughs> Very well, Miss Marie, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Not only do I intend to prove that Mr. Lemming is responsible for the damages that he caused... I am not responsible for the damages I caused. <laughs> but my good name has been besmirched, and I intend to do everything in my power to unsmirch it. <laughs> Your honor, the testimony from Don Hollinger makes it very clear that my honor is at stake. And unless I can convince him in court and prove it here, never again will I ever be able to prove to him that I've been telling the truth. Miss Marie, I think it's about time you introduce the witness who did see the accident. There aren't any witnesses. Your honor, I realized right away that I'd need a witness, so I returned to the scene of the crime. Well, this isn't any crime. This is a civil suit. Oh, well, I return to the scene of the civil suit. You heard that, Your Honor. Look for her own good. Put her away. Your Honor, may I go on? And on and on and on and on and on. Anyway, I then returned to the scene of the... whatever you call it, and started looking for witnesses. Excuse me, sir. I wonder if you could help me. Just take them off. Have a seat. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, no. I, I want to talk to you about an accident. You see that sign over there? Not responsible for damaged goods. So don't blame me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my shoes. I meant a car accident. I didn't see a thing. Oh, you must have seen it. It happened right outside your window. Lady, even if I saw it, I didn't see it. I make it a habit to never get involved. Then you mean you won't help me? You got a broken heel? I'll fix it. If I had a broken heel, I don't think I'd let you fix it. Why not? I make it a habit never to get involved. <laughs> May I help you, dear? Uh, well, I hope you can. Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, silver, china? I have some lovely Victorian doilies. I'm sure you do. It's just that I'm looking for a witness. A witness? I don't believe I have one. Well, it's not a thing. It's a person. Oh, a witness. <laughs> to what? Uh, to an accident. It just happened the other day. Oh, it was just terrible. I've never seen anything like it. I was in that accident. Oh, my dear, I'm surprised to see you up and around. When that blue hard top came around the corner. Oh, it, it was a red convertible. Well, I, I'm sure I must have seen it. I don't miss much of anything around here. <laughs> it was the one where the pedestrian ran into my car. Oh, yes, the pedestrian. Now I remember. It was a green pedestrian with a white top and it ran smack into a lamppost. <laughs> How much are those Victorian doilies? <laughs> Excuse me, 
me, sir, but did you happen to see an accident right outside your shop about two days ago? I think there were a couple accidents this week. Yes. Well, mine was the one with the red convertible and the sewing machine. Huh? A, a man with a sewing machine ran into my car. Oh, now I get it. Oh, did you see it? Oh, sure, sure. Where's the camera? <laughs> what camera? All right, I'll play along. What do you want me to say? Well, well just tell me what you saw. <laughs> I bet you keep the microphone in your purse, huh? What are you talking about? Come on, tell me, when's this gonna be on TV? <laughs> Look, all I want to know is, did you see my accident? Oh, sure. You know, uh, I'm not only a butcher, I sing, too. <laughs> Way down upon the Swanee River, <laughs> ah, far away. Miss Marie, you promised this would have something to do with the witness. Your Honor, I found my witness at the butcher shop. Well, I didn't exactly find him. Actually, he found me. The witness found you? Yes. Uh, well, you see, I left my name and telephone number at all the stores that I went to. You know, just in case somebody came by that had seen the accident. And when I got home that night, a man called me who had seen the whole thing and he'd gotten my number from the singing butcher. Oh, may we hear from the witness, please? He's not here. Uh -huh. A witness isn't of much value if he isn't present in the court. Well, I, I was trying to explain before that he had to go to a wedding, but he will be here. I just know he will. He can't be very reliable if he isn't here. He's a very reliable man. Mm-hmm. You can rely on him to cover up for you. What's the name of your witness? You know, I was so excited when he called, I forgot to ask him. Why don't you just make up a name? I really do have a witness. I just didn't remember to ask his name. Could we take another recess? I'd be too tempted not to come back. <laughs> May we hear from you now, Mr. Lemming? Thank you, Your Honor. That is, if the statute of limitations hasn't run out yet. <laughs> Look, uh, I'll make this as brief as possible. Just take her story and reverse everything she said. But my witness will tell you that I'm not at fault. How much did you pay him to say that? I didn't pay him anything. Ha! That's why he didn't show up. May I say something? Yes, Your Honor. No, oh, tell her good, Judge. Miss Marie, it's Mr. Lemming's turn now. Will you please proceed? Your Honor, I was walking along, minding my own business and carrying my brand-new deluxe super flyer, which is now garbage, <laughs> when this dizzy dame comes barreling down the street, aiming straight at me. Anyway, Your Honor, it's just her word against mine. And you can see by her own testimony how valuable her own word is. I rest my case. Oh, incidentally, Judge, I'm a very heavy contributor to the Police Athletic League. Thank you, Mr. Lemming. The bailiff has informed me that a gentleman has arrived who says he is a witness for Miss Marie. He came! I told you he'd come. Well, he's too late. Hey, he'd probably lie through his teeth anyhow. Oh, please, Your Honor, I throw myself on the mercy of the court. As I thought you'd come to this sooner or later. You may question the witness. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Bailiff, may we have the witness, please? Oh, I demand the cross-examine this witness, Your Honor, because I guarantee you he'll be just as phony as that singing butcher. And that's phony, P-H-O-N-E-Y. Real big phony. You're my witness? That's right, Miss Marie. I'm Father John Morton. Well, how are you, Father? Fine, thank you. Well, that's nice. And uh, how was the wedding? It was beautiful. Well, I guess that just about completes my questioning. Your witness, Mr. Lemming. Father? Uh, how are things down at the parish? <laughs> Do you believe me now? If I didn't, I might be struck by lightning. Did you see the look on Mr. Lemming's face for the first time he was speechless? Well, all I can say, it's a lucky thing Father Morton arrived when he did, because that judge was ready to throw the book at you. You know, I feel kind of sorry for poor Mr. Lemming. Well, what about me? I'm the guy with the dent. Well, you won. Now I can pay you in cash, or if you like, you may have a sewing machine. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Lemming. I think I'd kind of like to have the sewing machine. Well, now, wait a minute. Who's going to pay for my car? I'll pay for it. Just think of all the money I'm going to save making my own clothes. <laughs>